overall, at the Fukushima Daiichi plant, the situation remains very serious. As concerns the pumping of water, uh, the Unit 1 condenser is full. And in preparation for transferring water in the basement of the turbine building to the condenser, water in the condenser storage tank is being transferred to the suppression pool surge tank since 31st of March. Water in the trench was transferred to a water tank at the Central Environmental Facility Process main building in order to, to prepare for removal of the water from the turbine building basement in Unit 2. Pumping of water from the condenser to the suppression pool water surge tank started at 7.45 UTC, 29th of March. For Unit 3, pumping of water from the condenser to suppression pool water surge tank was started at 8.40 UTC, March 28th, and was completed at midnight UTC on 30th March. Concerning pumping into the reactors, etc., Unit 1, fresh water has been continuously injected into the reactor pressure vessel through the feed water line at an indicated flow rate of 8 cubic meters per hour using a temporary electric pump with diesel backup. The meaning is that there is some difference in depth. In Unit 2, fresh water is injected continuously through the fire extinguisher line at an indicated rate of 8 cubic meters per hour using, same, a temporary electric pump with diesel backup. And in Unit 3, fresh water is being injected continuously at about 7 cubic, per, per, cubic meters per hour into the reactor core through the fire extinguisher line using a temporary electric pump with diesel backup. It's constant temperatures. The indicated temperature at the feed water nozzle of the reactor pressure vessel and bottom of reactor pressure vessel on Unit 1 are stable at 256 and 128 degrees, respectively. There is a slight decrease in the pressures in the reactor pressure vessel and in the dry well. The indicated temperature at the feed water nozzle of the reactor pressure vessel of Unit 2 is stable at 165 degrees. The temperature at the bottom of the reactor pressure vessel was not reported and the indicated dry well pressure remains at atmospheric pressure. As concerns Unit 3, the indicated temperature at the feed water nozzle of the reactor pressure vessel is stable at 101 degrees and at the bottom of the reactor pressure vessel it is also stable at 112 degrees. The dry well pressure remains slightly above atmospheric pressure. And the validity of the temperature measurement at the feed water nozzle is still under investigation. Fuel pools. <clears throat> the pumping of water into the Unit 1 spent fuel pool by concrete track, concrete pumping, pumping track, was started at 4.03, 4 hours 3 minutes UTC on 31st of March. For unit three, fresh water was sprayed to the spent fuel pool, by also by a concrete pump on 31st of March. And unit four, it was done to the spent fuel pool on the 1st of April. Units five and six remain in cold shutdown. Concerning radiation monitoring, on 31st March, the position of iodine-131 was detected by the Japanese authorities in eight prefectures and deposition of cesium-137 in 10 prefectures. In those prefectures where deposition of iodine-131 was reported on 31st March, 
The range was from 29 to 1,350 becquerels per square meter. For cesium-137, the range was from 3.6 to 505 becquerels per square meter. In the Shinjuku district of Tokyo, the daily deposition for iodine-131 was 50 becquerels per square meter and for cesium-137, it was 68 becquerels per square meter. No significant changes were reported in the 45 prefectures in gamma dose rates compared to yesterday. And as of 28th of March, recommendations for restrictions on drinking water by the Japanese authority are in place at two locations in the Fukushima prefecture, and restrictions continue to apply for infants only. The IEA monitoring team made additional measurements at nine locations west of Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The measurement locations were at distances of 33 to 58 kilometers from the nuclear power plant. And the dose rates ranged from 0.4 to 2.3 microsievert per hour. At the same locations, results of beta gamma contamination measurements ranged from 0.01 to 0.49 mega becquerel per square meter. <clears throat> the other team who had made monitoring measurements in Tokyo during the last week has finished its activities. And as concerns food, since our written briefing of yesterday, significant data related to food was reported on 31st March by the Japanese Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare. Reported analytical results covered two samples taken on 15th March and 109 samples taken from 27 to 31st of March. Out of these 111 samples, analytical results for 98 covering various vegetables, spinach, and other leafy vegetables, fruit, seafood, various meats, and unprocessed raw milk in eight prefectures, Chiba, Fukushima, Gunma, Ibaraki, Kanagawa, Niigata, Tochigi, and Tokyo, indicated that iodine-131, cesium-134, and cesium-137 were either not detected or were below the regulation values set by the Japanese authorities. However, it was reported that analytical results in Chiba, Fukushima, Ibaraki, and Tochigi prefectures for the remaining 13 of the total 111 samples for spinach and other leafy, leafy vegetables, parsley and beef, indicated that iodine-131 and or cesium-134 and cesium-137 exceeded the regulation values set by the Japanese authorities. And it was indicated by the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare in its press release on the 21st and 23rd of March 2011 the following restri restrictions which are in place. In Fukushima, concerns distribution and consumption of leafy vegetables, including broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, kakina, komatsuna, and spinach, turnip, and unprocessed raw milk. For Ibaraki, distribution of spinach, kakina, parsley, and unprocessed raw milk. In Gumma, restrictions concern distribution of spinach and kakina, and in Tochigi, the distribution of spinach and kakina also. Now, the joint FAO IAEA Food Safety Assessment Team has completed its mission and presented its report to the Japanese Cabinet Office, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare and the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestries on 31st March. 
the IAEA members of the team are returning to Vienna today. We, uh, the agency, in, a, in agreement with the Japanese government, will dispatch two reactor experts to Japan. They will hold meetings with Nuclear Safety Commission, NISA, TEPCO, and other Japanese counterparts from Monday, 4th April, and onwards. The objective of this visit is to exchange views with Japanese technical experts and to get first-hand information about the current status of reactors at Fukushima Daiichi and the measures being taken and the future plans to mitigate the accident. Then I want also to mention that uh, the following countries have provided the monitoring data, their monitoring data to the IEC. And the list is the following, Belgium, Bulgaria, Canada, Finland, France, Greece, Ireland, Italy, Malaysia, Russian Federation, Spain, Switzerland, and Singapore. We are analyzing this whole set of data and we will report on our analysis and in a uh, what, concrete manner uh, later. I must also say that on, in our brief, written brief, which was uh, issued yesterday, uh, there was a um, mistake which we made when we reported that, uh, when we wrote that Singapore had uh, reported uh, a level of cesium and iodine. Uh, this was our mistake. So we will, uh, or it, it may already have been corrected. If it has not, it will be corrected, and we apologize for this mistake. 